Okay, so we are starting Tale in 52. This was a request from Ariel um, and Isaiah, I guess. Um, I have never read this. I mean, I, I read it through, uh, you know, a couple of times, uh, you know, in preparation for this, but uh, I had not seen it before. Uh, but it intrigued me because it's about a topic that we've talked about a lot before, but it seems like a new angle. So I'm curious to see what happens. Okay. Lamnateh Maskil Ladavid. Okay, so, um, yeah. So uh, let's just say for the conductor, that's how we've been doing it, right? For the conductor, a uh, a maskil, uh by uh, David. Okay, fine. All right. So um, yeah, we'll 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 deal with that as we do. I mean, our working you know you know our working definition of maskil. Anyone? Uh, oh, it's a, we had a couple. I feel like recently. I feel like it's like a, a, an instructive. Yeah, uh, an instructive psalm, psalm, right? Yeah. So then it gives the context. Bevo doig haedomi vayagid l'shaul vayomer lo, uh, ba David el base achimelach. So when doig the Edomite, yep, uh, came and, and told, I guess, and told Shaul, uh, saying to him, and, and said to him, or something? Uh, yeah, and said to him, yeah, and said to him, and said to him. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, wait, oh, well, no, sorry. But, but, David, David came yeah. uh, to base Akhenel. Yeah. All right. So, what I have down here, all the Psukim, uh, but I feel like let's go through the parak first uh, and then uh, and then we'll get to the context as we need it. Okay. So, Ma Tis Halel Bira'a Hagibor Chesed El Kol Hayom. Yeah. So, this is, uh, this is a little difficult because it's talking to the Gibor. So, Matis hal bara. Actually, I'm not sure. Hagibor is a little weird, right? Like bara hagibor, like the ra is is. Yeah, it does seem like that. Yeah, right. But tis halel is second person now, right? What? Uh, what can you praise yourself? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. What can you praise, uh, or maybe what do you praise yourself for? Right? What do you praise yourself for? In are we going to go with the evil of the warrior? Right, like Ra Hagibor, right? Um, I guess that's probably a question. Chesed Kel Kol Hayom. Kindness of God is all day. Is all day, yeah, all day? yeah. That's what it sounds like. Okay. All the day, all day. Uh, all the. Oh, I think all, literally all the day, but I think, yeah, yeah actually, I, all day is how we'd say it in English, right? Because if it was Kol Yom, it'd be every day. Um. I think. Uh, okay. Havuos tachshov l'shonacha kitar milutash ose rumia. Those are those nope. a bit of a difficult uh, thing. Let me. I actually forgot to get up the. Uh, oh, I did. Um. So I think it's havuos. Um. Yeah. This is a this is a weird Mishli word. Oh, this is interesting. Hava is saying desire. I thought. It could, oh yeah, it could also mean destruction. It's a very weird word. Yeah, so let's just say here. Is it in, uh, what's that word where it means to it and the opposite? Contronym? Yeah. I don't know. It's a desire and also destruction. Right. <clears throat> so it's like quasi. Right. I remember the way we had it in Mishle was like, uh, it was, uh, I remember we uh, the context was like the being. And if it was talking, depending on how you learned who it was talking about, then it would be either destruction or like mm -hmm. yearning. But yeah, so um, let's actually just check how it translates this for... Uh, in the English here for uh, treachery uh, that which you have devised disasters yeah so it's it's uh, it's hard let's just say disasters for now okay um, this is strange your tongue contrives ooh contrives is nice hmm. contrives disasters sure. okay um Okay, actually, you know what? disaster sounds too natural. I want to go with um, contrives. Uh, no. no, like like uh, acts of destruction. <laughs> destruction. Um, hitar milutash osrimi. You want know to tar is uh, tar with an i in lo yavor al rosho. Oh wait, um, the crowd. No, um, no, like a it's a nazir word. Oh, uh, I thought it was the, the um, something. No, it does have to do with hair. I think it's a razor. Uh, yeah, a razor. Um, yeah, so a razor, uh, milutash, a sharpened razor, ose rumia. You make, or you make 
quicker? Yeah, I think this is talking about the tongue though. So I think a sharpened razor that that yeah that uh that I guess we'll say enacts trickery. Okay. Is it trickery or deceit? Uh, deceit, deceitful trickery. I guess all trickery is kind of deceitful, right? Well, but isn't there there's another word that's so like Romeo, and then there's the other one that's like Romai. No, maybe? I don't know. Let's say deceit. Uh, actually, let's look at the BDB. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say our goal. Uh, not that we have to do this. Uh, is um, is uh, we have to this weekend. We have next week, and then yeshiva break. So it would be nice if we finished this next week. But we've we've never <laughs> said that and done that. So <laughs> okay. Um, no, there's no rush. Okay. Ahavta ra mitov sheker midaber tzedek. Sella. Yeah. You love evil more than good. I guess. Yeah, you have loved evil. Yeah, more than good. Oh. Yeah, actually, yeah, over is good. Do you say over? Yeah. Yeah, over good. Sheker midaber tzedek. Falsehood uh, over, I guess. Yeah. Um, righteous. righteous speech. Yeah, speaking righteously. Sella. I think. Sella. Sella. Yeah. Sella. All right, we're not going to get sucked into a whole. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're not going to get. Yeah. It is weird, right? Yeah, yeah, usually, sell is all for good usually stuff, right? Sell, yeah. yeah. That's strange. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll try to sidestep that and see. Okay. Ahavta kol divre vola lashon mirma. Is that the word you're thinking? Mirma? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Same flourish. Can be positive, right? I don't think so. Doesn't Yaakov say that? Yeah. Yaakov to them and like it's like the whole thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's actually like. Bad, bad. Not sure. You can use you can use Mirma like you know, Rabbi has a whole share on that. You can use Mirma for. Oh, I mean, you can definitely use it for good. I mean, he used it for good, but I, I think the word is a okay. negative connotation. Okay, so you uh you have loved. I don't love all obfuscated speech. Obfuscated <laughs> <laughs> speech is that is that what our school said? No, I just that's the word that came to mind. I feel like that's what our school says. That's because we did it a couple weeks ago. Oh no, it doesn't. Yeah, devouring words. Devouring? Yeah, because it means to swallow, <laughs> swallow. right? Yeah, swallowed. Well, like I guess words. Isn't it no, isn't it mean swallow. like they're obscured? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, words. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, swallow words. Let's just say swallow words. I don't know what that is. Lush on Mirma. Trick or I guess language of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I just want to see if they give the same definition here, or if they give a different one. Tricky speech. Tricky speech. Uh, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. The civil. Yeah. Deceitful speech. Deceitful speech. Okay. Gam el yitatsacha la netzach, yachtacha v'yisachacha me'ohel, v'sheireshacha me'eretz chaim sala. This is the, the puzzle that you directed me towards. I was like, I have no idea how to translate that. So let's just read the translations here. But the Gemara knows. Yeah, all of these words are just like foreign to me. Um, so seven, right? Is, uh, we have... Uh, likewise, God will shatter you for eternity. He will break you and tear you from the tent and uproot you from the land of life, Sela. See, there's Sela makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Rehersh says, God will also break you forever. He will send you away and remove you far from every tent and uproot you from the land of life. And Alter says, God surely will smash you forever, sweep you up and tear you from the tent, root you out from the land of living Sela. I'm going to go. Like, it's the same. Yeah, kind of the same. Yeah. So at least, at least it's uh, unambiguous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, is to smash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just see this in the words here. Gam kel also God. Oh, didn't he didn't say also, right? Or even, even God, um, surely will smash yitatzcha lanetza, uh, forever. Yachtcha isn't that yachta bezechalim like sweeping away the the coals, yeah. right? So uh, or raking the coals, sweep you up, v'yasachcha me'oha, tear you from the tent. And uh, root you out from the land of the living. Root you, I like that as a verb for Sheh Resh Chaim Eretz Chaim Tzala. Yeah. I think also you, Tzadzka is like the same short. It's a word that you just go, sparks coming out. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Uh, how did everyone else say it? Tzadzka? Uh, shatter you, break you. Tzadzka? It was, a, yeah. Uh, I um I went over it once with Levy uh and we got some initial theories but I didn't read any of the them yet yeah. yeah um okay oh. uh, <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> yeah yeah Sadikim will see you and fear you, and fear you. Uh, oh sorry it doesn't say you right 
V E R O. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Is that a capital one? Uh, question, but it's a good question. Let's just see how they take it here. Um, okay. no, it's just a C, right? Yeah. yeah, not your your ucha, right? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, and fear. Um, the Allah yisach yischaku. And on him, they will like just laugh. Yeah, and laugh at him, joke. right? Yeah, or mock. Oh, yeah, yeah laugh, uh, mock, uh, laugh, mocking joke him. about about him. Yeah, yeah. Um, hine, the old ha geber lo yasim elohim mauzo ve yiftach brov ashro yaos bahavaso. This is a hard one. Yeah, will not place God. Do we want to say a different word for man that's more specific because of geber? The strong man, the strong man. Yeah, let's we'll say the strong man will. Not uh all right, sorry. who does not that, that God will not um, wait low yasin that no, God I, think, will not do I think this is describing the strong the strong man who does not place yeah make God his uh fortress, right? Yeah, his or his strength. I see. So, yeah, no, strong I see. fortress, I yeah. And and trust in the or I guess and the yeah, probably and who will trust in his abundant wealth. No. Yaos Bahavoso. You will be overpowered by factions. Sure, that sounds good. We'll be <laughs> overpowered <laughs> by, let's say, disaster. Now I think disaster is good. Uh, what does it say at the end of nine? Uh, Behold, a man who did not make God a stronghold, but he trusted in his abundance of wealth. He drew strength from his treachery. Drew strength from his treachery. That's interesting. Treachery. That's weird. They use Bahavoso. Yeah. Yeah. What are the other guys? The other ones say? Says, he trusts in the abundance of his wealth, uh, semicolon. Let him be strong then by means of what he has devised. Okay. And Alter says, look at that, I don't know, his stronghold, uh, and who trusts in his great wealth, who would be strong in his disaster? Okay, so they all say strong, right? He will be strong in his, we have disaster, which is how it was used earlier. We had um, treachery. treachery, which I still am not sure where Rehearse is getting from. Then Arsenal. No, that was Arsenal. Oh, that was Arsenal. Treachery. Yeah. And what did Rehearse say? Rehearse said, um, by means of what he has devised. By means of what? All right, I'm just going to omit that for now. <laughs> yeah, I guess his his uh, devisements. Devices? Yeah, uh, yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, match or match? I always say machinations. Say machinations also. Yeah. yeah, I might not know how to say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Va'ani kizayis ra'anan v'ves Elohim v'tachti v'chesed Elohim olam va'ed. And I am like a, I don't know what ra'anan is, but I'm some sort of um, uh, olive. Yeah, uh, olive tree. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, I think it is a, a verdant uh, or flourishing uh, olive tree uh, in the house of God. Uh, I trusted in the kindness of God uh, forever. Forever, yeah. Is is weird? It doesn't say Olam. the Olam Ed, just says Olam Ed. I've never seen that before. Okay. And then the final pasuk is Odecha Olam Ki Asisa Va'akave Shimcha Kitov Neger Chasidacha. Oh, I will thank. Yep, I will thank you. Forever, forever. Yes, it's not for you did. For you have uh done. You have done. Yeah, probably done good. Um, the uh, akave shimcha. Uh, I will hope. Yeah, it's weird because there should be a word in there, right? In or towards yeah. or uh for your name, kitov neged chasidacha. There's good. There is good. To all of your. Yeah, so negative is a weird thing here, right? I, yeah, usually it's opposite, right? So I think in the presence of, um, of your, your, your uh, highest ones, yeah, uh, like before. Okay, okay. So let's just read that through one more time in a flowy way. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Let's do let's do what we did last time, which is to read all the English ones in, uh, uh, just to drill it in our heads. Uh, okay, so we have art scroll. For the conductor by a mosque by David, when Doeg the Edomite came and informed Saul and said to him, David came to the house of Achimelech. Why do you pride yourself with evil, O mighty warrior? Uh, pride, we said that's Tis Halal, right? Uh, why do you maybe boast is a better word because boast means to praise yourself, 
right? Let's say boast. Why do you boast? Uh, and I think, yeah, you want, know I'm sick of this. <laughs> no need to scroll fast this when we have copies and paste. This isn't like the olden days when we had to like literally take out scissors and cut and copy and then paste. All right, let's move this down uh, beneath the added layer. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, why do you pride yourself with evil, oh mighty warrior? So they do address the warrior. Um, yeah, I, I think that that was why what I was remembering here. Um, in in evil, uh, oh warrior. Why do you boast the evil? Why do you boast evil? Uh, wait, what is it? In evil? Is it bara? Yeah. Why do you boast? In evil? Yeah, in evil, oh warrior. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, why do you with, with evil? Okay. Yeah, we could do, we could add in with, um, or about evil. Okay. Uh, why do you pride yourself? Yeah, we said that the kindness of God is all day long. Your tongue devises treachery like a sharpened razor that works deceit. Works. They said you love evil more than good, falsehood more than speaking righteousness. Sella. You have loved all devouring words, a tongue of deceit. Likewise, God will shatter you for eternity, who will break you and tear you from the tent and uproot you from the land of the life, Salah. The righteous will see and be awed, and the, they will laugh at him. Behold, laugh at him is actually good. Behold, the man who did not make God his stronghold, but he trusted in his abundance of wealth, he drew strength from his treasury. So that's a quote. That the, That's what they're laughing. Uh, but I am like an ever-fresh olive tree in the house of God. Uh, I trust in the kindness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your devout ones, I will hope to your name for it is good. Okay, that's fairly pretty much what we did. Okay, reverse. Here, yeah. <laughs> to him who grants victory and instruction by David. When Doeg the Edomite had come and told Shaul and said to him, David has come to the house of Achimelech. Why do you boast yourself? Oh, they say, he says boast. Of, uh, of evil, O hero. The loving kindness of God endures constantly. That which you have devised, your tongue thinks. So he flips it. Like a knife ground too sharp. Uh, tar Mulutash. So he's saying Mulutash is uh, too sharp. I don't know what he too. That works to see. You have loved evil more than good, falsehood rather than speaking righteousness, so on. Uh, but since you are a friend of all devouring words, what what was six? Friend? Ahavta? Okay. He's saying, all right, fine. That's a little bit. Okay. You have, uh, um, uh, since you are a friend of all devouring words, devouring words is interesting, Zivarbala, of the tongue deceit, God will also break you forever. He will send you away and remove you far from every tent and uproot you from the land of life. So the righteous will see it and be afraid, but they will laugh at him. Uh, behold, the man who did not let God be the source of his strength, he trusted in the abundance of his wealth. Let him be strong then by means of what he has devised. But as for me, I am like evergreen olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I will yet give you thanks forever because you have done it. And I will wait upon your name as it is good unto your devout ones. Okay, altar for the lead player, David Moskiel. When Dog the Edomite came and told Shaul and said to him, David has come to the house of Achimelech. Why boast of evil, O hero? God's kindness is all day long. Disasters your tongue devises like a well-honed razor, doing deceit. You love evil better than good, a lie more than speaking just to Salah. You love all destructive words, the tongue of deceit. God surely will smash you forever, sweep you up and tear you from the tent, root you out from the land of living Salah. Um, and the righteous shall be see and be awed and laugh over him. Look, the man who does not make God his stronghold and who trusts in his great wealth, who would be who be strong in his disaster. But I am like a verdant, oh, he says verdant, hmm. uh, olive tree in the house of our God. I trust in God's kindness forevermore. Um, uh, I uh, quote the altar forevermore. Uh -huh. I uh, shall acclaim you forever for you have acted and hope in your name for it is good Behold, uh, before you're faithful. Post before is also good. What? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw one thing I liked, which was I liked the quotes around, uh, uh, yeah, this part. Um, uh, behold. Yeah. Okay. So where is ye pivot? Yeah. Um, it starts at eight. You think it starts at eight? Yeah. Okay. Meaning like this? Yeah. Okay. What is your argument for such a pivot? <laughs> um, I think that it's switching from what's going to happen to this guy versus what, like, how people will interpret it. Oh, interesting. The deacon will begin. Okay, so let me just check that out for one second. So one through seven is describing this guy and saying what's going to happen to him. And then eight through 11. Is he getting free? Eight through 11? Say, like, so deacon slash David are, it's their interpretation. Okay, their, their take on him. Okay, I, I see that. Yeah, Ariel? Yeah, I want to say that the first pivot is from one through one through uh, five. I mean, one, one through... five included. Yeah. And okay. I don't know about six yet, but eight and on, I think it's focused more on Sadiqam. 
Uh huh. Um, so what is the, I don't know. Is there a reason why you're dividing? Because dividing between five and six is a little weird. Well, it's because six, it sounds like six is uh, kind of like the, uh, again, uh, whatever. It's the consequence of that guy, um, of, of the first guy. Isn't isn't six a, a continue? I mean, look. Oh, I'm sorry. Like... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So not six. Uh, through six. Through six. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, and then, I, I, and then, part and then seven. You're saying starts the consequence. Yeah, that's the consequence. Right. Though, the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I see that as well. Um, and uh, and the way that the tzaddikim are going to mock him is also part of the consequence. Yeah. 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 The only issue I have with that, because like, I was going to say the same thing. The only yeah. Issue I have with that is like ten love him is still really fitting for that. Yeah. So I was going to go like this. Uh, no, I was going to go like this, which is that one through nine is all about this bad guy and 10 and 11 is about David. Yeah. yeah. To me, in terms of the subject and in terms of uh, the thing that supports it is the subject matter and the, um, the voice switches to first person. Oh, so I, I think that this is, uh, for me, this is the best bet. Um, and then obviously we can divide within that to understand it more, like all your divisions are true, but, uh, but, um, right. I, I think this is the best argument here. Also, okay. I mean, it is interesting that there is a little bit of a parallel here because it is uh, what well, first of all, we, we can kind of ignore the first part because that's just intro. You don't have to color it. Um, uh, okay, then we have um, three through six is a description of this bad guy, and then seven through nine is what happens to him, mm -hmm. and then ten is a description of of, uh, of of the good guy and then 11 is what he's going to like look forward to you know so Wait, it's a little bit nine is what well, nine is what happens to the bad guy that's what the uh, that's, that's what yeah that's what the study are uh condemning him mm -hmm. mocking him yeah okay so let's go so again i think all the distinctions that you said are relevant uh i just think this is the cleanest distinction and uh yeah okay so what are the problems and observations and such Ooh. Where to begin? Or do you want to read the um the Doeg story now? Stories. Stories. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, yeah. This was, I didn't even get up to this in school yet. So. Yeah. Okay. So let's read through the the Doeg story. Uh, I I gave a sheet on it last year called Lush and Hard Reexamined or something like that. Um, and I had a theory on it, but I want to keep the theory out of this. Uh, we'll just go for, over the facts here. Um. Uh. For at least for now. Okay. So this is in one Shmuel chapter twenty one, and I think I skipped some sukim later on. So. David came to Nov, this is when he's on the run from Shaul. David came to Nov to Achimelech al-Kohen, and Achimelech trembled to meet David and said to him, uh, why are you alone and no one is with you? Uh, so innocent question. You don't usually see the king uh, walking alone and just, you know, like showing up at your house. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was decreed to be, he was um, anointed. Uh, not, was he anointed? or He was declared to be the king. Yeah, right. But, uh, but he was not functionally the king, yeah. 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 Um, and David said to Ahimelech HaKohen, the king has charged me with a mission and said to me, let no one know a thing of the mission on which I send you and on which I charge you. Now this is false. Yep. Okay. He's just kind of, because he's trying to hide from Shaul. Uh, Thus I inform my tenants to be at a certain secret place. And now what do you have at hand? Five loaves of bread? Give them to me or whatever there is. So the 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 facts here are basically that he wants to hide from Shaul, but he also doesn't want any information getting out. So he makes up this convenient story of like secret rendezvous and uh, no, yeah. Like absolutely nothing on him. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Liar. Right, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I gave, I don't know why. I, I hear my own voice giving the analogy of like, I don't know why I, I used Kamala Harris. So like Kamala Harris shows up and says, hey, can you help me? <laughs> and there's no one else around her. You know, I think maybe the thing is like, if it's the president, then it's too conspicuous, but I don't know what I, I don't know. Yeah. But it is like a very, very, very weird uh, scenario here. Yeah. Okay. Very weird. Marshall too. Okay. And the coin answered David and said, I have no common bread at hand, solely consecrated bread. If only the lads had kept themselves from women. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> and David answered, <laughs> what? Oh, no, no, never mind. It was, it was a very inappropriate joke. Okay. Uh, and David answered the coin and said to him, Why 
women are restricted to us as in times gone by when I went out to war and the lad's gear was consecrated, even if it was a common journey and how much more so now the gear should be consecrated. I have no idea what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the coin gave him what was consecrated for there was no bread except the show bread that had been removed from before Hashem to be replaced with warm bread when it was taken away. Okay, this is not important for our purposes. That's what it sounds like. Okay. All right, then here we go. Switch, switch, switch scenes. And there, a man of Shaul's servants that day who was detained before Hashem, and his name was Doeg the Edomite. Detained. Well, Netzar. Uh, so I think that means. Oh, I don't remember from last year. Um, I don't remember. He's held back. It means held back. Uh, this is uh, Shmuel Aleph, chapter 21, plus 8. Um, uh, and his name was Doeg the Edomite, chief of the herdsmen who were shawls. And David said to, okay, so that, that's just like uh, setting the scene. Okay, but then, and David said to Achimelech, don't, oh, sorry, sorry, Doeg is there, meaning, okay, yeah, yeah, meaning, meaning Doeg was really supposed to be, I guess, uh, going somewhere else, but he had been held back, hanging around by shawls, and the, the Mashmalos is that David doesn't know he's there or is not like worried about him there. Yes. And David said to Achimelech, don't you have here at hand a spear or a sword? For neither my sword nor my gear have I taken with me, for the king's mission was urgent. Okay. And the coin said, the sword of Goliath the Plishti, whom you struck down in the valley of the Terebin. Here it is, wrapped in a cloak behind the aphone. And he presents it to him like, uh, yep. whatever that, uh, no, no, uh, I don't know what the name of the sword is. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Um, during Rabbi uh, Zering's uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Here, he used this stuff oh. for that scene. <laughs> nice. That is definitely the scene that you would use. Yeah. Uh, if this, uh, sorry, here it is wrapped in a cloak behind the avoid. If this you would take for yourself, take it, for there's none other but it hereabouts. And David said, there's none like it. Give it to me. Okay. Skipping a bunch of psukim, uh, we get to the next chapter. And Shal heard uh, in the cha next chapter, Puzzle 6. And Shal heard that David was discovered and the men who were with him. And Shal was sitting in Gibeah under the tamarisk on the height, his spear in his hand and all his servants poised in attendance upon him. And Shal said to his servants, poised in attendance upon him, listen now, you Benjaminites, will the son of Yishai give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make every one of you captains of thousands and captains of hundreds that all of you should have conspired against me and none revealed to me where, when my son made a pact with the son of Yishai and none of you was troubled for my sake to reveal to me that my son has set up my servant to lie and wait against me on this very day. I remember Alter making a comment on this saying that like you can hear the paranoia in the sentence structure of Shaul, like it's just one run on like a uh, paranoid sentence. Um, okay, and Doeg the Edomite, who was poised in attendance with Shaul's servants, spoke out and said, and here's the line, I saw the son of Yishai coming to Nov to Achimelech, the son of Achituv, and he inquired of Hashem through the Urim of Tumim, and provisions he gave him, and the sword of Goliath Aplishti he gave him. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, distorted, right? Well, the, the Urim well, yeah, the Rubitum well, thing well, is Rashi, Rashi holds that eight foot is their own so when he referenced. Yeah, a lot. Of, I remember this from last year also that a lot of the Mafarshim struggle to say like exactly where did this happen. You know, it's a difficult thing. I, again, without getting into my whole theory of uh, of Rufilus, I think the the shot is that he all of the information he told him like on a individual true false test, each of these would check out. You know, but the narrative he wove was one that was portraying a certain truth that was not true. <laughs> okay, yeah, a certain reality is not true. Okay, and you'll see what happens. And the king yeah. sent to summon, yeah? Okay, yeah. and the king sent, sent to summon Achimelech, the son of Achituv, and all his father's household, the Kohani were, who were in Nov, and they all came to the king. And Shal said, listen now, son of Achituv. And he said, here I am, my lord. And Shal said, why do you conspire against me, you and the son of Yishai, giving him bread and sword and inquiring of God for him so that he's set up to lie and wait against me on this very day? Okay, so that's like aggression. And Achimelech answered the king and said, uh, and this is again, you got to feel for Achimelech here, right? He's just coming in like, the king is coming and accusing him of like treachery, of uh, treason. Um, and Achimelech answered the king and said, and who of all your servants is like David, loyal and, and king's son-in-law and captain of your palace guard and honor in your house? Did I this day for the first time inquire of him of, uh, for him of God? I think that's where they get that he asked the room to him right, from, right. From, because he he does, uh, uh, did I for the first time inquire of him from God? So it implies that he did inquire. Um, far be it from me. Let not the king impute anything to his servant or, uh, to, or to all my father's house, 
for your servant knew nothing of all this, neither great nor small. So he's got good excuses. Like your David is your second in command and like he's your uh, son-in-law and I was just trying to help. And the king said, you were doomed to die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's household. And then, mm -hmm. and the king said to the runners, poison attendants on him. A lot of people poison attendants. Yeah, right. Turn around and put to death the Kohanim of Hashem for their hands too is with David, for they knew he was fleeing and did not reveal it to me. And the king's servants did not want to reach out their hand to stab the Kohanim of Hashem. And the king said to Doeg, you then turn around and stab the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned round, and it was he who stabbed the priest, and he put to death on that very on that day 85 men who wore the linen ephod. And he struck down No, the city of the Kohanim, with the edge of the sword, man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and donkey and sheep, all by the edge of the sword. So that those servants who uh, refused to kill him didn't get killed. The servants who refused to kill him didn't did ref refuse to, yeah, kill him, yeah. Did not die. Um I, for uh oh yeah, you yeah, mean shawl servants who yeah, yeah right. Um and one son of Achimelech, the son of Achitub, got away, and his name was Evyasar, uh, and he fled after David. Uh, and Evyasar told David that Shal had killed the Kohanim of Hashem, and David said to Evyasar, I knew on that day that Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would sur surely tell Shal, I am the one who caused the loss of all the lives of your father's house. Stay with me, do not fear, for whoever seeks my life seeks your life, so you are under my card. Yeah, so sad story. Oh, he did know. Uh, it sounds like he did know, and he just didn't, um, wait, did he, he say he surely would know? Right, that's true. That's strange. So then why? Yeah. What, uh, Yadati had by Yom Hahu, Kisham Doeg, um, Dovig, I don't mean, Ki Hagid Yagi Lashal, Anachi Sabos. Yeah, right. So, we like being a miscalculation on what Shal is responsible. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm sure that's a whole. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the sword was really necessary in the end for Dovig to have. Uh, yeah, so far at least. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's going to want some weapon in case the yeah. guys come after him, but uh, you know. preferably one that glues blue when there are orcs. Um, okay. That Russia. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of doing the Russia, what are the uh, questions and problems here? When did Doeg or observations about anything? Does yeah. Like both so, so this is a weird yeah. thing, right? Is this, is this, hold on. I mean, this is maybe this is a basic question here. Is he describing Doeg, or is he saying that David wrote this as instruction, you know, based on the incident of Doeg? Right, right, right. Because right, uh, first, yeah, is it just a like biographical thing? The like he wrote this right in that time. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right, like, right, like, right. There's right. not a lot of that story. Yeah, yeah. Because the re reason I'm I'm doubting whether this is talking about Doeg, about what saying is Doeg is not a Gibor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Because uh, it even said Herge. that he's well, a herdsman. Well, yeah, I just want to see what he did kill. Yeah, well, men, no, there is Chazal. Right, there are Chazal that point out that Doi was like a huge Tamakago. Like he in, in the sense, like he could he was a Gibor in the sense, like he was the head of Sanhedrin. Okay, Plame Shot is Gibor is not uh, Plame Shot is Gibor is 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 a Gibor is a is a is a, like a warrior strength, like physical strength. Yeah, right. As a or, or or military strength. Um. Uh, where was the part about Doeg? Uh, Avde Shaul. No, oh yeah. Uh, uh, wait, 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 he was a herdsman. Yeah, I thought that was earlier. Uh, before. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the earlier character, right? Uh, me Avde Shaul. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Abir Haroim, right? Chief of the Roim. So I, I guess you could make the um the argument that if Abir or if Gibor means any sort of leader, then maybe it's the Gibor. Maybe that's him. I'm sure Refers would say Abir and Gibor are the same source. So why are you assuming that he was Gibor? Because this is Herdman. Yeah, he's her yeah, herdsmen, I assume, are not the the warriors. But well, wasn't Shul also Herdsman? No, David was. No, and, well, yeah, David. Well, David was, was not at this also. point. Not at this know, point, though. I'm saying it could be both. It's not like you want to be another. Yeah, but it's calling him a herdsman. Oh, but but... He was poised in attendance, all right? No, he... uh, but that's just like in attendance, I think. Yeah, well, let's see what the, the Hebrew is. Uh yeah. uh Asher uh, Lashat Ul. Uh, no. No, that was. That oh, was still. Good. Oh, you mean later? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nitzav al Avde Shaul. Mm -hmm. Ready. Nitzav was like ready. Uh, standing at attention. Okay, fine. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I guess let's just phrase that as a question. Okay, what is the relation between the incident in incident of Doeg and the contents of the Perak? Right? Is uh, it, it, are, are the psukim uh, about Doeg, or about people like Doeg, or merely like 
inspired by the incident with uh with the egg. I mean that's probably gonna be like the first one. Yeah. Okay, back in that classic gimbal. Mm -hmm. Um so it's a weird appeal. Say like you have a keyboard who's like boasting about his evil and you're saying, Why are you boasting about this? The kindness of Hashem is all day. Yeah. Like what like that's good, yeah. but like does that mean he like why does that mean he should stop boasting? Okay, what exactly is the argument Not being Made in uh, not territorial. Like. Oh yeah, in uh, in uh, you know to to this gibor right. Um, uh, uh, if he's boasting about his evil, why is pointing out the day long uh, chesed Hashem going to stop him? Yeah, or how how is pointing out? Yeah, you have a question. Oh, not so on Pasuk 8 about the Tzadikim's reaction, yeah. it seems a little weird to me why, like the mix of fear and mocking, it sounds like those are a little bit of like opposite reactions. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's, let's ask it as a general question and then break it down. So first we have, what, why do the Tzadikim uh, react this way, uh, which is... Uh, seeing, being in awe, and mocking, and uh, and then Ayala's question is that specifically the uh, the awe and the mocking seem to be at odds, uh, since since you know mocking usually uh, usually isn't done uh, when one is odd. Right, like that's that's yeah. I, I can't think of anything like that. Uh, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, yeah time and RN. Yeah. yeah. Right. Still is weird though that that like. I mean, that's coming off of God's punishment of the of the God. Right. Of the smashing of the right, but like and it's kind of weird. Like like I guess you know, let's say at Yamsuf. I know there's not like those guns we're trying, but at Yamsuf. You know, you're sitting there and you see the sea come crashing down on the Egyptians. You have awe. And then, like, first of all, the, the mocking is not simultaneous. That would seem to be, like, what I always bothered by, like, you know, like... And then even as a, like, follow-up, it still is weird. Like, it doesn't seem to naturally follow from that, that we're going we're gonna to laugh at the guy, you know? Um, yeah, uh, Ariel, then Isaiah, then back to... Yeah, what's the... Um... What's the mushal odds? Like he's he's like an olive tree. What, what, yeah. What okay. So what is the mushal, the mushal of the olive tree in the house of God, right? Uh, and like, is that yeah? You know, like, are both components components part of the mushal, uh, or is uh in the house of God, uh the nimshal like uh, already the nimshal, um. <laughs> yeah, uh, Isaiah. Um, one. Uh, can you look at the question? So one thing. Oh yeah. Um, in class. So who are the Tzadikim experiencing seeing and being in awe of? Um. Is it shot? I mean. Yeah. So I think shot. I'm not going to ask the question unless like uh, we're dissatisfied with this shot. I think it means that they're going to see that God smashes the wicked, and then I, I like being in awe and be in awe of God. or fear of God. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yitzi, do you have a question? Yeah. Um. What it's it's this in test. It's funny that it refers to the abundance of wealth. What does that have to do with uh, right? I, uh, I mean, seemingly, I don't know, with tongue, treachery. Right. That's a good question. Yeah. Do we even, is there any other mention of his wealth here? Where does the wealth into uh, enter this picture of this uh, Russia um, or this, uh, I, I don't want to call him a Russia if we don't call him a Russia. Do we call him a Russia at any point? Um, I'll have to run off. I don't think so. Right. So we'll call him a Gibor. Why? Let's keep going, right? Yeah. He is a Ramai, though. Uh, yeah, let's go with uh, Isaiah, then Ayala, then Ariel. Um... <laughs> okay, Ayala. <laughs> okay, so my question's on the description of either Doeg or this character, this yeah. evil, or 
who loves evil it seems like a really really harsh description like loving evil over good and falsehood it's just like seems like very extreme so i guess would like in the interpretation of this i don't know i guess is this only talking about an extreme like bad person or can we apply this even to people who are like less extreme okay so let's ask this as a broad question on psukim um three through nine okay um which is um okay who is this gibor okay he seems to have lots of diverse bad qualities okay um so like uh and then to to what extent is like is is this talking specifically about someone that bad and to what extent uh like uh is is do these do these statements apply uh to lesser uh evil people yeah Ariel and just circle around yeah now, Pasuk uh, what is what is David Amalek's request to his brother? Yeah, what is it? Odecha le'olam ki asi, so v'akavesh in chalkita. It's funny, he doesn't actually make a request, right? Fine, what is he saying? Yeah. What, what, what is he stating? Yeah, what okay, so what or is demand, or demand. David um, saying that he will do, uh, and, and why will he do this, right? So he says two things, two verbs, right? Odecha. And akave shimfa, and then the reason he gives is kitov neged chasidacha, right? Um, so the question is like, what is he doing? Okay. What is he doing, and why is he doing it? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, fine. Yeah, in five we say that he uh, that he's loved evil over good, um, and yet like the whole time the main thing we're really focusing on is his, you know, this one action or this one trait, I guess, of of like let's call it evil speech. Yeah. Um, and then there's a thing in nine about what, whatever that is exactly. But like, is he just kind of saying that? Is that just like poetic? Like, like you love people over good. Like, uh, who says just because a guy speaks like meanly or badly yeah. or evilly? Why is that? Why is that? Okay, so you know what we should do? L- let's actually just like list the qualities here. Um, so we have, um, uh, yeah, boasting over evil, right? Boasting over. Ra, uh, we have um his tongue contrives acts of destruction. Yeah, his tongue. Um, well, let's just say the speech. Uh, Trivial tongue. Right Sharp. is. Sharp. Yeah, uh, his uh, you know speech which Razor is speech. contrives destructive acts, uh, and the tar. Oh. Uh yeah, and acts deceit. So I actually I want to list the deceit as a separate quality simply because it also mentioned Ose Mirma. Oh no, sorry. It mentioned oh yeah, no, you're right, it's deceitful speech. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna list it just because it is a different quality, even though there's a quality of the speech. Mm-hmm. So deceit. Um Ahapta Ra Mitov, so he loves good. Over no, no, evil. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was <laughs> halavai. He loves uh evil uh more than good and uh falsehood more than uh righteous speech. Also, that's, a, that's an interesting one too. Like, what's the relationship or you know antonymity between falsehood and righteous yeah. speech? Like, right. You would think like, like, falsehood and truth. Yeah. 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 Uh, divrei bala. He loves divrei bala. Yeah. I say anyone. I'll be more specific here. Okay, uh, his speech contrives destructive acts and cuts and cuts like a razor Is with deceit. Like razor? Oh yeah, sharpened like a razor. I should just copy and paste the <laughs> Again, and, and enacts deceit like a sharpened razor. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, so then here, this is, he loves, loves devouring words, which you have to figure out what that is, uh, deceitful speech. Okay, and then we skip, 
And then the implication is he does not make God his strong fortress, but instead trusts in his abundant wealth. Right. So that's the one that really doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't think we get through the cycle. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you had, yeah. So what's so I think there's like a, a parallel between three and ten. Maybe you even said this before of like uh, he's telling the guy to not trust, him, to not boast about his evil. Oh, that's interesting. Shem is kind all day, and he's saying he's like a virgin olive tree. He trusts in the kindness of Hashem forever. Yeah. So what's the deal with that? Okay, that's parallel? nice. Yeah, um, so um, 3 and 10, uh, what's the deal with this parallel? Okay, Ayala? So I actually was noticing the parallel, but more, I think I would expand it to 9 also. Because it seems like in 9, definitely yeah. there's like the theme of strength and right. trusting in strength. And it seems right. like right. Hashem's right. kindness right. is forever versus... The strong, this guy who's like trust strong in some treachery is like not going to last. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Ariel? Yeah, I feel like I have to ask because nobody else asked it, but like, you know. Isn't this obvious? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah. This is a fun yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Plus six, plus six, seven, you know, like this is the source of this whole shit. Oh what are yes. The, what are the yeah, what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah is, right, right. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's true. I forgot about oh, that. I was holding back this entire time. I, I appreciate holding... your restraint. Okay. Um what is uh this saying? Right? What is uh what what fate is befalling this Russia, this guy? Um yeah, and yeah. I have another question on on uh you uh you touch the call like, yeah. like yeah. To me, it doesn't really seem to make sense. So, how do you smash something eternally, or just like, forever? Said it earlier. Like like yeah. If you break something, then you break it, and then you just don't. Fix right. It. And now it's eternally broken. Yeah. Like, right. I, I think that'd be plain shot. Right. Is that the plain shot? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll like. There's got to be a good English word for this. Like, um, like to render something broken forever. Like that, that's the sense of it. Like I'll, you know, yeah, I, I think so. That's claim shot. I mean, that's the non Hazal idea. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Seven opens with a gum. I don't know what the gum is doing there. Yeah. At all. Like I don't know. Like, it's not the question. It's yeah, like, yeah. I also had that question. Like, I'm just like, yeah. Did any of the English translations put that in us other than me? Uh, God will also. Yeah. Also. So Ruff Hirsch does. Art scrolls is likewise and alter. So Alter just doesn't doesn't do it. Surely. Surely. Oh, that's that? interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Um I just don't really get what the gum is doing. Like, yeah, well, which puzzle was that? That was seven. Yeah. yeah. What's it building up? What, right? Yeah, I guess what what is the function and implication of the gum? Yeah. Um yeah. I mean, I, I suppose it's like the uh Yisachachamiohel. Uh, that's like, you know, I don't know, right. the tent of God. Uh, right. I mean, um, I think we all. No, you know, what we do need to ask. We do need to ask. What is the practical application? Because this is a Moscow, right. right? What is the practical Moscow insight? Right. Which is not a question that we have to ask for every pasuk and uh, every parak and mm -hmm. Uh Okay, I feel like we got the main ones. Okay, so now the question is, do you have any approaches or theories for either justifying the pivot or for the entire thing? And I have one move and that's it, but uh, but uh, it's not even a full move. It's just like an observation. So that's all I got more for tonight. Yeah, Al? Okay, so I think what I, like maybe would pin it on like, what is the source of strength for a warrior? Ooh, okay. And I think it's describing the, like, bad guy warrior yeah as like it kind of reminds me of a Mishlaic like russia who's like building up his whole like treacherous deceitful system built on foundation of lies kind of yeah and he's taking strength maybe also in his wealth and whatever like false um like external strength type of thing he thinks he has but ultimately that's gonna like it's gonna be pulled out from under him sweep you up and tear you from the tent root you out mm -hmm. from like the whole source is going to be like cut off yeah versus the tzaddik who's taking strength in hashem and in reality 
and hoping in Hashem's name, then that is the true source of strength. And okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good observation. Uh, I think um, I'm a little, I don't know if I'm supposed to be bothered by this. I'm a little bothered by the fact that he doesn't say the word Russia, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, but, but like it seems in other words, it seems more specific than that, but I think that what you're saying is true of this guy. So uh this uh like th this follows the the uh the same pattern as the Mishlaic uh Russia and Sadiq um uh in uh based on what they put their trust in and what the results are. And I'm not going to type it all out because I think we, we know it, but you said it very articulately. Yeah. Yeah, Isaiah? This is actually a question. Yeah. So it's like, why are specifically like Sadiqin viewing this event and having a reaction to it? Okay. Like normally like someone falls and okay, like like whoever sees it like is going to see that this person fell. But like this seems to be right. Like, Sadiqin are going to Right, like you have a lot of people initially about how when the Russia falls, then everyone rejoices, you know. But this is apparently is the Sadiq's reaction. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, can you go back up? Okay, so I I just thought of this. I wonder if um, you know, uh, Chas, you know, it's it's a consequence of if seven doesn't happen, if Pasuk seven doesn't happen, meaning like, meaning like if the Sadiq, meaning. I guess it depends how you how, how you learn it, but like the Sadiqan will see and be in off fear and you know uh, laugh and mock about this guy. I wonder if you know that is a good thing or 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 a bad thing if if they if they do see a guy like him. Hmm. I mean, I see I see, I see the way you're reading. I think plain shot is that this is a good thing. Um. And so why have, why have fear though? I mean, what, what's what's the fear? I think awe is a better translation in terms of awe, awe of God from from seeing the Rishayim uh, be punished. Yeah, yeah, is it? Also, yeah. Like, what if the guy trying to get out of his acts of acts of destruction? It doesn't mention any like goal, right? Or gain. The, yeah, I'm gonna tack that onto this question here. So, what is this guy's motive? Uh, the pasuk only the the uh, the parak uh, only describes his actions. Uh, yeah, fine. Um, kind of the pasuk get off. Yeah, that question. Um, it's a kind of strange reason for me to do these things. Kitov uh, neged chasidacha, like as opposed to just because it's good yeah like, that is interesting kind of like yeah they're saying like oh i want to be part of your casita yeah why is david uh limiting his uh cause for hoda and i don't know what the noun is tikva that's the noun uh to God's treatment of of his chassidim. Yeah. Right? Why not? Because these activities are good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to hear the one half step I have? Okay. Yeah. So the thing that uh, maybe we want to go into this, and I don't have the idea to figure out, is uh, this is an interesting combination of the topics of Lushan Hara and Bitachon Bashem. You know, that somehow the activities of the Russia exhibit a lack of Bitachon in Chesed Hashem. And the opposite of that is a Tzadik who trusts in Hashem. You know, and that's a strange opposite. <laughs> you know, like, and that's why I think like Ayala's uh, approach is, uh, is 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 somewhat fruitful here, you know. But like you have this, this uh, I'm just going to type this out as, as notes here, is... um is like a possible step is uh this parak contrasts a uh a tzaddik's trust in the chesed hashem uh with a uh a russia's lushan hara okay which implies that the russia uh is lacking in a in in, in trust of hashem so like what is the relationship 
uh, the relationship between Bitachon Bashem, or I guess Bechesed Hashem specifically, and uh, and you know these forms of lashon hara. La. Uh -oh. No. 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 It's not. No. Yeah. This is that was, that was just me, not not the computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's, that's an interesting thing. So I, I do think that Ayala, so that's what I meant by Ayala. I think your statement is because it's true of all Rashaim, uh, is going to like be the underpinnings of this, but I think there's something more specific he's getting at about like, like somehow the fact that the Russia makes recourse to Lushan Hara or feels confident that this is going to succeed. It like, it does remind me of the other product we did of like, nagbir itano mi adon lano, right? Like our, our tongues are with us. Oh, sorry. Our, our lips are with us. No, with our tongues, we will prevail. Our lips are with us. Who is God? Who is Lord over us? You know, like, like it's kind of like taking the place of God, but I don't know why that should express itself. Or I don't know why the opposite of that should be like not trusting in Chesed Hashem. So I think that's like an intriguing thing. Yeah, Ariel? Okay. I, I I have to bring this in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but but uh, okay, fine. So I want to say you that... want me to open the Gemara? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I know the yeah. Gemara. My heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I want to say that. Yeah. I want to say that you know Pasuk Pasuk uh Pasuk Yud Allah. You know, it's interesting that like he's you know like the word tikva like and I will hope. Yeah. For your name. For there is good, like it's just a very interesting thing. Like, what, what, what does it mean? He's gonna hope, like, yeah, like, this is God, like he's gonna do it. You don't need to hope for God to do something. Okay, right. So I want to say that. Like, I, I would strengthen the question by saying that um, hope is somewhat contrary to bata. Yeah, like to be talking. Yeah, yeah. If you're but, trusting, you don't need to hope. You just know it's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it just leads me to, you know, to to a direction of where the previous somehow. There's there's a request that uh you know uh David Malik is making and that's you know that's plus design. I mean like you know for God surely will smash you forever like oh okay you you are you're you are pointing out something that I forgot to mention when we translated this is we have to remember that um that the future or whatever you call it, the imperfect in uh in Talim could be either will or or request right so you could translate something as may God smash you forever. Uh, may he sweep you up and tear you from your tent and may he root you out from the land of the living. Mm. Right? Um, so I'm just going to put a little asterisk here um, and then have as a, another uh, alternate translation. <laughs> um, uh, may God uh, smash you forever, sweep you up, uh, etc. Which leads me to my next question is like, like it's it's like it's, you it's, want to get shared? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Not not in your shoes. <laughs> but no, I was just thinking that, like you know, like I wonder if um you know because he seems like it's almost like it kind of uh, implies that even though you know even if his request is not met, like he's still gonna you know do the right thing because like he has a certain belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have not done this yet, but let's just end off with doing what we found to be productive in the past, which is to just read Sforno's statement of the theme, just to have it in our mind. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> what about <laughs> Alia Dinola? He right, says, Lamna Seif Maskil David Bavod W. Rutta Lamar Becheder Hamela, Viaduahu Mash Amruzal. Oh, look what he's quoting, Ariel. Yo, what's up? It's known what Hazal said. Shadoig Bakhtopo Hayu Kahamim Ubali Torah. Russia, that Russia. Via Dua Od Mash Amruzal Shari Le Lutsurba Mirabana Lu Uduye Nafshe. It's mutter for a uh, rabbinic student. Uh, I forgot what Luduye Nafshe means. Anyone know? I think it was. Yeah, Luduye is a weird. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is it to praise himself? Lu Wait, how do you spell it? Luduye. Uh, oh, Aleph. Le, u, let's just say Nafshe. Huh. Maybe there's different gears, or maybe this is a wrong reference. Okay, fine. Well, uh, let me just, wait, let's just, here. Uh, let's remember that. Do it. Yeah, so he must be quoting from a different gear, sir. 
Okay, I'll have to look it up later. Actually, it's uh, you know I should look it up in the in the Jastro. I don't know if it's gonna be easy to find. Waiting. All right, fine. Let's just uh, we'll wait till this loads. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, he to praise himself. Yeah. You know where I got it from? Because I got it from uh, uh, Rav Nachman's servant Daru in Psachim at the Seder when he says, what would you say if, uh, what would you say if your master let you free? And he says, or what would a servant, what should a servant do if his master says, he says, by the do you have so he says he would thank him and, and praise him. So I think it's Hoda, um, or something like that, or praise himself. So Kamru Hanavi Alvasham, as it says in Navi, and he quotes my favorite Pasak, Kim Bizosi Salam is Halahaska Vidosi. Uh only in this made the one who praises himself praise himself. So he's saying if you're a rabbinic student, then you can praise yourself. There's your Mati. No. Uh but that's what he says, is that meaning like like there is if you have Yidiya Sashem, that is something that a person can truly like um you know uh credit himself for Lakah Amr David Negat Doik Hadomi Shahaya Nira Le Naim Ish Mase Umis Halo Batoraso Uvakiro Yasi Marbo. That's why David says uh, about Doik Hadomi, who seems to other people to be a man of action, of good actions, and who can praise himself about his Torah, but inside he lurked in ambush. So then that's when he says this. Okay, fine. So this is, uh, uh, we'll finish the sentence here. Okay, so um, what are you doing uh, praising yourself, Gibor, uh, uh, and praising yourself about the chesed of God, which is Torah? How can you praise yourself about the Torah of Hashem when there is evil in your heart? This is not good. Uh Ha uh hey shall hagibor he hey ha kriya. Uh it's the hey of kriya, like hey, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, meaning that he's calling to the Russia. Um mo hake uh hakel there's a little delayed reaction. Uh huka achas, oh hakaha huka achas. Um the hatora nikris chesed, ka amro torah chesed al shona. Umilas chesed torah ha hatava shemeti va echalach vermi blishi yeshal mi mena uh osam mena. So so chesed is a is a, a reference to Torah because uh it ind chesed indicates a beneficence that one person does to his fellow without being asked. Vachin ki ha hatava hanas is aide sha'ela sashal. Khain is when the person asks. But Torah Sashem, he chesed lagamre. The Torah Hashem is complete chesed. Kamro, as it says in Amos, Rak Eschem Yadati Mikol Mishpos Adama. I've only known you out of all the land, uh, the families of the earth. Okay, good. So we have stuff to work on from that. That it's a, criti a critique of Doeg's hypocr not hypocrisy is the wrong word, but like how can you credit yourself as a Torah sage when you've got this evil in you that's expressed through this uh, Lashon Hara? Then we've got the uh, other approach that I'm saying about the um, the talk on the Lashon Hara, and then we got Ariel's. Uh, Ariel's a Chazal approach. Yeah, Chazal. Yeah. yeah. Um, just in terms of your approach. Yeah. So you're asking, like, why should the fact that this guy um, be, like, trusting in his own um, strength and walk and stuff like that mean that he, and using his tongue for deceit, mean that he's not trusting in Hashem? Yeah. So, I mean, in this case with Doeg, like, I think maybe, maybe part of it is, like, Hashem had said that David was supposed to be king right. already and already decreed that, and Doeg is, like, Going against that and right. using, you know, trickery in order to like yeah, that's true. That, from that is true. So I don't know in general, but in this case, yeah, that's definitely a good point. I, I think one of the difficulties here is that uh, I don't know what Doug's motives are, you know, and it, it's not like he. It seems like if anything, this wasn't against David. It was really against the Kohanim, right? Like, like he's not. I mean, he, it is against David ultimately as well, but like the evil that it ends up being done is like, right. you know, the quantum, yeah. Okay, let's stop here. We have what to think about and hopefully we'll get a good idea next week. Did, did you name your um, uh, GPT? Uh, you're welcome. Bye. Um, did I name it? Um, 